a crowd swarms within the towering walls of Deutschlandhalle, one of Nazi Germany's largest stadiums. The grand arena is alive with the hum of voices, flashes of camera bulbs, and the murmurs of excited conversations. The Berlin International Motor Show is in full swing, and right now, all eyes are drawn to the heart of the stadium, where a strange machine, one like nothing anyone has seen before, awaits its big moment. Hannah Reich, Germany's most daring female pilot, stands beside the aircraft. Foreign reporters and photographers, huddled near the sidelines, furrow their brows in skepticism, their cameras at the ready. The machine before them looks peculiar, with its twin rotors mounted on angular steel outriggers, an unlikely contender to make aviation history. Reich climbs into the cockpit, a compact frame of metal and fabric with primitive controls. The crowd hushes as the rotors begin to spin, their metallic blades carving the air with rhythmic precision. Slowly at first, the dual rotors gain momentum. Lights glint off the spinning blades. Then, almost imperceptibly, the wheels lift off the ground. Reich's eyes remain focused, hands steady as she nudges the throttle. The machine responds. It hovers effortlessly, floating just above the floor in one perfect vertical motion. The year is 1938, and Germany has just introduced the first fully functional helicopter to the world. A harsh takeoff. The early 20th century was marked by daring innovation and rapid advancements in aerospace engineering. Among the pioneers was German aviation engineer Heinrich Fokke, who co-founded Fokke Wolf Flugzeugbau GmbH in 1924 alongside Georg Wolf and Dr. Werner Naumann. Their shared ambition was to push the boundaries of aircraft design. No easy feat, given the era's technical limitations and inherent risks. One bold attempt came with the Focke-Wulf F-19 Enta, an experimental canard monoplane designed with forward-positioned wings for improved braking efficiency and shorter landing distances. However, Focke's determination was tested in 1927, when co-founder Georg Wolf lost his life while testing the F-19 during a demonstration flight. This loss was a significant blow to the company and Foka personally. Yet, instead of abandoning his pursuit of revolutionary designs, Foka pressed on. By the early 1930s, Foka's focus shifted toward the possibilities of rotary wing flight. In 1932, after years of wind tunnel tests and development, he submitted his concept for a rotor-powered aircraft to the German Air Ministry, or RLM. The proposal was swiftly approved reflecting the Ministry's growing interest in alternative aviation technologies. Fokker's fascination with rotorcraft was further fueled by his company's licensed production of the CRV C-19 and C-30 autogyros, designed by Spanish aeronautical engineer Juan de la Sierra. These aircraft provided Fokker with practiced insights into the mechanics of rotary flight, such as the intricacies of blade articulation and the use of autorotation for safe landings. This experience laid the technical foundation for the next stage of his career helicopter development. Highs and lows. The first prototype of the FW-61 took to the skies on June 26, 1936, piloted by test pilot Ewald Roeves. This initial flight, lasting only 45 seconds, was brief but groundbreaking, demonstrating that a rotary wing aircraft could achieve stable, controlled flight for the first time. Just a year later, in May 1937, the second prototype of the FW-61 made history again. It performed the world's first successful auto-rotation landing, safely touching down with the engine off, relying solely on the airflow spinning the rotors. This feat demonstrated that even in the event of engine failure, a helicopter could land safely, marking a major milestone in rotorcraft technology. Despite Fokker's engineering achievements, his career took an unexpected turn when the Nazi party deemed him politically unreliable and forced him out of Fokker Wolf Flugzeugbau GmbH. However, his expertise was too valuable to ignore. Impressed by the potential of Fokker's designs, the RLM recommended his involvement in the production of the Messerschmitt Bf 109, one of Germany's most prolific wartime aircraft. Fokker-Wolf was reorganized into a limited company, but even after the work on the Bf 109 was completed, the RLM encouraged Fokker to establish a new company focused on helicopter development following the review of his promising plans for the FW-61. Fokker partnered with Gerd Achelis, a talented test pilot, to form Fokker Achelis GmbH. With the creation of this new company, the FW-61 
was officially redesignated as the F.A. 61. Fokker and Achilles brought the revolutionary helicopter to center stage at the Berlin International Motor Show. With the world watching, they aimed to demonstrate the machine's remarkable capabilities in a showcase of aviation progress, led by pilot Hanna Reich. At the Deutschlandhalle, Reich commanded the aircraft to lift inside the room. She pushed the control stick gently forward, and the aircraft glided in a slow, deliberate arc, tracing a perfect circle. She had to be careful, as any mistake could prove fatal. She tapped the throttle, and the aircraft raised once more, this time ascending in a vertical climb. The audience stared in disbelief as the rotors buzzed, their synchronized hum reverberating through the hall. This aircraft had just done the unthinkable. A controlled hover, a vertical ascent, a flight in every direction, all without wings. Attendees from all over the world watched in disbelief at the FA-61, suddenly understanding that this had just marked a shift in aviation history. A Revolutionary Design The airframe of the FW-61 was adapted from the Focke-Wulf FW-44 Stieglitz biplane, a training aircraft that had already established itself as Focke's first major success. The Stieglitz's design featured a robust yet lightweight steel tube frame covered in fabric and plywood. It made it both durable and easy to control, a perfect foundation for the world's first practical helicopter. The FW-61's fuselage retained much of this proven structure, offering the stability and strength necessary for vertical flight, while ensuring the aircraft remained light enough for effective takeoff and smooth in-air control. What set the FW-61 apart from other experimental aircraft was dual three-bladed rotors mounted on steel tube outriggers on either side of the fuselage. These counter-rotating rotors solved the critical torque problem that plagued early rotorcraft designs, eliminating the need for a tail rotor. The FW-61 could lift nearly 2,100 pounds during takeoff and reach speeds of 76 miles per hour. Powered by a 160-horsepower Brahmo SH-14A radial engine, the rotors were fully articulated, with each blade able to change pitch during flight. This cyclic pitch control allowed for precise maneuvers, including hovering, backward flight, and even lateral movement, capabilities unheard of in fixed-wing aircraft at the time. Flying to higher ground Despite the FW-61's groundbreaking design, the helicopter had significant limitations that prevented it from becoming widely operational. Its single-seat configuration and minimal payload capacity made it more suitable for short-range travel and demonstrations than for practical use in the field. In response, Focus team sought to upgrade their concept by developing a two-seat sports version, the FA-224. Equipped with a more powerful Argus AS-10C engine, this model promised a considerable performance boost. Yet, with the onset of World War II, the FA-224 project was shelved indefinitely. As wartime pressures intensified, achieving further progress in rotorcraft development became challenging. Nevertheless, Foka persisted, teaming up with BMW's Berlin division to design a more ambitious model, the FA-226, later designated the FA-223 Drache. The FA-223 was the world's first true transport helicopter, capable of carrying up to six occupants. It featured a fully enclosed cabin and a powerful Brahma radial engine, which enabled it to lift up to 3,300 pounds. In 1940, at the Reckland Test Center, the FA-223 demonstrated unparalleled capabilities, a top speed of 113 miles per hour, a climb rate of 1,732 feet per minute, and a maximum altitude of 23,300 feet. These achievements underscored its status as the most advanced helicopter of its time. However, the FA-223 was deemed not yet ready for military deployment, pressuring Foka to accelerate its development. By 1941, Foka produced a second prototype, featuring an observer's position with a glazed cockpit and a mounted machine gun. Plans for a multi-purpose version and even a four-rotor variant were considered, aiming to broaden its operational roles. However, Allied bombing raids in Germany severely limited production, and only a few FA-223 units were ultimately completed. Influence on Helicopter Design While the FW-61 never reached mass production, its development and the groundbreaking research published by Heinrich Foka in his three technical papers between 1937 and 1943 laid the foundation for a new era of helicopter design. 
One of the many captivated by this revolutionary aircraft was American engineer Wynne Lawrence LePage, who attended the famous Deutschlandhalle demonstration where Hannah Reich piloted the FW-61 in front of a stunned crowd. Inspired by its capabilities, LePage, along with his business partner, Haviland Hall Platt, attempted to acquire licensing rights to produce an FW-61 in the United States. However, the restrictive terms set by FOCA prevented any agreement, forcing the American engineers to take on the ambitious task of developing the first helicopter in the U.S. independently. As the threat of war grew, the U.S. Army Air Forces ramped up arms development to close the gap with Germany. The page leveraged his footage of the FW-61's flight to garner government support, leading to the passage of a 1938 bill that allocated $2 million for helicopter research. With this backing, LePage and Platt established the Platt LePage Aircraft Company. They received a government contract to produce a helicopter based on Fuka's design principles, which they designated the XR-1. The aircraft featured a two-place tandem cockpit with sliding canopies, a T-stabilizer arrangement reminiscent of the FW-61, a powerful 440-horsepower Pratt & Whitney R98523 radial engine, and rotors mounted on towers extending from the fuselage. The XR-1 made its first flight in 1941, but from the outset, technical challenges plagued its development, including control issues and excessive vibration. Despite showing potential, the XR-1 program was terminated in 1946. Similar efforts in England and Russia to replicate Fokker's design faced comparable difficulties, as no other engineer could achieve the FW-61's performance. The McDonnell Aircraft Corporation took significant strides in helicopter development by leveraging the flight test data and design insights gained from the XR-1 project, ultimately producing the first successful twin-engine, twin-rotor helicopter for the United States Navy. This new helicopter, named the XHJD-1 Whirlaway, represented an evolution of the XR-1, featuring a similar dual-rotor configuration, but with a larger, more robust airframe and enhanced capabilities. Unlike its predecessor, the Whirlaway's design incorporated separate engines for each rotor, which improved power distribution and offered greater stability and control. The Whirlaway proved its value through its capability to handle heavier loads and longer missions, showcasing McDonnell's engineering improvements in rotorcraft technology. This twin rotor helicopter set a new standard for rotary wing flight within the military, laying the groundwork for subsequent multi-engine designs and advancing the U.S. Navy's operational capabilities in helicopter aviation. Place in Aviation History Despite the immense push shown by the FW-61 helicopter, only two prototypes were ever produced before its production was halted. These machines, although few in number, achieved feats that captured the world's imagination and demonstrated the unprecedented potential of vertical flight. Heinrich Fokker's colossal contributions to aerospace engineering garnered him great recognition, including the prestigious Lilienthal Medal, awarded to only the most influential figures in aviation, and an honorary doctorate from his alma mater, the Technical University of Hanover. In 1993, he was inducted into the International Air and Space Hall of Fame. Although the original FW-61 prototypes were lost during World War II, Fokker's influence remains intact. An accurate replica of the FW-61, along with a recovered original rotor head, is preserved at the Hubschrauber Museum in Bukeburg, Germany, serving as enduring tributes to Fokker's pioneering vision and to a helicopter design that brought the future of aviation to life.